Hi, I'm Andrew Watson. Thanks for joining me for my weekly guitar blog. It's March 1st, 2015, and this week we're going to be discussing how to create two string scale ideas. This question was sent in from Rod. He's out in Harper Woods, Michigan, and he wrote in with this email. I see a lot of guitarists play licks and melody lines using two guitar strings going along the neck. Guthrie Govan does this a lot, and I was wondering how this method is worked out on guitar and if I should practice it in some certain way. I really like the sound of shifting along two strings while playing a lead or during a melody so some help with this scale approach would be great thanks from rod in harper woods michigan usa well hey, thanks for writing in uh, rod you know until a guitarist really gets to know their fingerboard the scale shapes can be a complex game of connect the dots however you know once scales are well memorized they can be performed very easily all over the neck and we can feel mentally prepared every time we grab into the scale shape but one of the more challenging ways to playing scales has to be linking them across several scale positions using only a couple of strings. Now this action has uh, to occur quickly and that's why we need to really develop and study all kinds of specific two string scale shapes uh, to be able to begin using this type of sound. So I put together a pretty straightforward two string scale practice idea concept to uh, help get you started with this idea. So let's not waste any time. We'll zoom in on the neck and get started. Performing scales on only two guitar strings is going to be a little bit different than working out scales, you know, in a position across all of the strings. And one of the most important things to keep in mind is that the layout of your two string scales will be kind of unique in both the group of scale tones that you select and how you decide to shift you know, from one neck position into the next, uh, how you decide to organize the notes, and there's kind of a lot to it. In my first example, I wanted to show you how you can work on developing your own personalized two string scale patterns by just first selecting a starting point for your tonic in our case, we're going to use a C major scale, and we're going to begin up at the 13th fret on the second guitar string. I'll keep things really simple by just playing five scale tones, and then I'll drop down into another position and another position as we go down the neck in sequence, and we're going to play the same run of five notes uh, as we go through you know, each of the positions. So uh, starting up at the 13th fret, we're going to start off with our first five notes going C, D, E, F, G. Then we're going to move down, we're going to start from the B note and do another run of five notes, B, C, D, E, F. Then we're going to drop down and we're going to do another run of five notes coming from the A this time, A, B, C, D, E. Then we're going to head down another fret, or another step in the scale I should actually say, sorry. We're going to be on the eighth fret there, second string, and we're going to go from that note, it's a G, carrying on going G, A, B, C, D, and then we'll just resolve on the C note. It's the same C in unison from where we started, but we're starting uh, on the 13th fret of second string and ending on the eighth fret of the uh, first string. So uh, all in all, here's how it goes. Now, the next thing that you want to do after you become familiar with how some part of the guitar is this two string scale layout, whatever you've decided upon, wherever that is, uh, you know, how that operates in a specific key is the start. But to create short and melodic uh, statements, uh, you know, simple statements in the beginning is also really important. So just, uh, you know, you want to make sure whatever you invent as a melodic statement in the beginning is kind of fun to play and that it is melodic. Uh, this is really important actually because it's going to take the line and help help it stick in your memory. And once it becomes well memorized, you're going to be able to not only apply it better, but you'll be able to manipulate it into other forms of the same part. And this will also help you quickly recall the ideas or the portions or the versions of them when you're going to be improvising eventually. So to give you an idea of how this might be accomplished, I've created an example line of a two string scale concept that takes a sequence to a style of statement and runs it all along several positions of the neck. Uh, so what we're going to do, starting on that C note once again, is the, uh, the line will go like this. So here it is again. 
And then we're gonna drop that line through those different positions. And again. And then again. And then we're just gonna resolve. So here's the whole thing. So it's really kind of an interesting way to go through all of the positions by creating a statement and then dropping the statement all along the neck. Um, you know, it is, this isn't the only way that you can do this. We're going to go over a few other ways. Uh, but it is, however, a great place to start because it's really going to drill you on that particular region of the fretboard. And you'll be thinking a lot too on how this thing is going to move around. So anyway, let's move on to some of uh, my other ideas that I have for you. And we're going to do that right now. For the next example, I wanted to incorporate some different strings and include a phrasing technique concept as well. So I've organized a slide lick idea. And it's going to operate on the fourth and third guitar strings with the slide technique occurring on the third string. So it's a pretty straightforward idea. I don't think it's going to take you too long to get this into your playing. You'll have to memorize the positions, of course, get the fingerings down. But I'm going to go through the whole thing at first here, just a little slower. It sounds like this. Okay, and uh, now here it is a little faster. So you can hear, you know, this thing can be pretty interesting when you go and put it to use. So just take your time with it and really watch uh, which fingers are going into which positions. Uh, you can even study the scale on its own a little bit, you know, at first to just really make a judgment call on which frets are the ones you need to target into. But uh, I don't think it'll take you too long to get this thing together. Another cool thing would be to move it to other strings and then try to flip the slide process, uh, you know, instead of having the slide occur on the third string can have it occur in the bass. Okay, so you have some fun with that. And uh, what we're going to do is one more example yet of one more interesting concept with this uh, two string scale concept here for you. So uh, let's move to that next. Well, for my final example, I've taken the two string scale idea into a slightly different direction by splitting the concept across a wider span of strings. So in this example, I'll play the two string scale concept between the fourth to the second guitar strings. All right, so uh, basically we're gonna skip the use of the third string altogether and just focus on our uh, fourth string and second string only. Now, I should mention something one more time here, just like we discussed with the first example. Uh, you know, I have to stress the importance of first playing across a group of frets and becoming familiar with how the scale is gonna get formatted across uh, all the strings that you're going to select. You wanna do that uh, prior to developing any melodic lines, you know, because then you're just gonna, if you do that, you're just going to focus on licks and you'll come up with ideas, but they're not going to really hone in to the exact two string format that, you know, you want to have if you're going to generate really long winded some ideas across the entire span of the fingerboard. So first you want to, you know, prior to developing any melodic ideas, you want to focus on your two string pattern, fully understand how that's laid out along your neck. And then once you have that down, you know, then you can move into messing around with some lick ideas or whatever you want to do. If you want to create a melodic statement, if you want to get better using these things and improvising, got all the uh, time in the world to do it. Just really know how it's all set up and you can have a lot more fun when you go to apply it. Now, the first thing I want to cover is just a linear exercise for moving through the scale patterns itself. So we're going to start here at the uh, E and C notes down in the first position. And just move up the neck with them that way. And the next part. You know, play the uh, whole example exactly as written. So 
So that's just taking two chunks of the scale and working on a little sequenced idea along each chunk. And then, of course, if you wanted to, you could carry on the neck, uh, go further with you know the idea, come up with more sequenced runs. But uh, the second thing I'd like to do before we wrap up is just take this uh, into a lick, you know, simple lick idea that can be put into action as a statement. So I'm going to take it a little bit higher, and I'm going to start on the uh, slide coming from the fourth string, twelfth fret into the fourteenth fret. So we're just going to do ideas like that, just spread between the strings, and you can hear the it's broken apart. We've got our slide action happening first there. And then we're going to move down a little bit too. So basically, uh, here's a lick idea that you can follow with. And, and then you can take it further down the neck if you'd like to. I'll just play that one more time for you. Well, you know, the two-string scale patterns are not only fairly easy to perform along the strings, but they generate a really interesting sound. These patterns can be moved laterally along the neck to cover a lot of the fingerboard very quickly, and segments of these two-string scale patterns can be heard in many classic licks, so you can get a lot of ideas from some famous solos, and I would just say that they're a pretty important part of a guitar player's repertoire. So as we covered in the lesson, start by learning the basic along of how the particular two-string scale you want to use will be sitting on the neck. Then come up with an interesting melodic phrase and commit its fingering and its pattern on the neck to your memory. And in no time at all, I think you'll find you'll be composing your own two-string scale melodic ideas, and you'll also probably be using them fairly quickly in your guitar solos as well. Anyway, that's about all the time I have for today. As always, thanks for watching. Have yourself a great week, and I'll catch up with you next time. Bye for now. If you're interested in learning faster, making better use of your time, and practicing longer, the Accelerating Your Learning Curve ebook is for you. Over 60 pages of information on how to take control of both the way you learn and the time that you devote to your practicing. Accelerating Your Learning Curve is available for instant download in the View Our Products area at creativeguitarstudio.com.